Hello and welcome to a Digital Media Academy how-to Minecraft Redstone Clocks and Command Block Proximity Detection Intermediate Level. My name is Alex McGee and I'm one of the lead instructors for the Introduction to 2D and 3D Game Design and the Adventures in Minecraft classes at Digital Media Academy. In this DMA how-to, we will focus on the different ways to set up redstone detection for Minecraft adventure maps. Here are the basic system requirements needed to run Minecraft. To download your copy of Minecraft, you can go to minecraft.net slash store. Now, let's get started. The primary mechanic in any adventure map is redstone circuits. Redstone circuits are a series of redstone wires and redstone objects hooked up to pistons, dispensers, and command blocks to create a specific flow of events. All of these components work together to create full adventure maps with custom buildings, NPCs, and quests. However, in order to start any specific event in a Minecraft adventure map, the redstone circuitry must first be triggered somehow. There are effectively two ways to start a redstone circuit. The first way is to have a player activate a redstone circuit themselves by intentionally pressing a button or pulling a lever. Pressing a button will output a redstone signal for a short period of time and then turn off the redstone signal automatically after enough time has passed. This signal from a button lasts for approximately one second. A lever, however, will put out a redstone signal for as long as the lever is activated and can then be deactivated by the player afterwards. This is ideal for events that you want the player to be prepared for, such as before starting a scripted boss fight or for starting a dialogue cutscene with a local shopkeeper. This sort of redstone trigger is very easy to set up and does not require any advanced redstone circuitry. The second way to start a redstone event is to have an event happen based on proximity or a certain set of criteria. This can be done in a variety of ways. Some of the more traditional ways to trigger a redstone event based on proximity is to have pressure plates or trip wires set up. Although these work well, unless you have a specific texture pack designed to make these blocks invisible, they are clearly noticeable and some players may choose not to step on them. In addition to this, they can be easily jumped over if there is space above them. As a result, pressure plates and trip wires may not be guaranteed to work. However, there is another way to detect player proximity based on their coordinates and a specific command block command. In Minecraft version 1.5, a new command was introduced called the test for command. This allows the command block to detect if a certain set of criteria is met and output a redstone signal if it returns for true. So for example, as you can see in this command block, the command is set to slash test for at p, which detects the nearest player, x equals 173, y equals 64, z equals 585, r equals 2. What this does is test to see if there is any player at the coordinates of x173, y64, and z585. The last part also sets the radius to check for anywhere outside of these coordinates. So, at r equals 2, that means that the command will return as true if there is any player within a two-block radius of these coordinates. So as you can see, if I go over to those coordinates, you can see the redstone circuit is activated. In this way, you can have a player activate a redstone circuit without them realizing that they're starting a redstone circuit. One of the drawbacks to the test for command is that the command block must be constantly activated by a redstone clock. A redstone clock will automatically send a redstone signal repeatedly. Redstone clocks can be made in a variety of ways, and there are many different ways to make them. I'll be going over three different redstone clocks here to demonstrate their strengths in both speed, how easy they are to set up, as well as any drawbacks there may be. First redstone clock is the easiest to set up and it creates a tick roughly once every three quarters of a second. In order to create this clock, you need to set down two redstone repeaters facing in opposite directions and click them three times each to set them to the longest delay. Then, if you take redstone dust and hook them up on both sides, then this will fully create the circuit. In order to kickstart the circuit, you need to place down either a redstone block or a redstone torch and immediately break it afterwards. So if I put down the redstone block and break it right away, it kickstarts the circuit and ends up creating this redstone clock. The most difficult part about this is the fact that putting down the block and breaking it before it can sit for too long can cause the clock to become stuck in the always on position. But aside from that, there are no other immediate downsides to this particular redstone clock. The second redstone clock is a little more difficult to set up, however it's arguably better 
because it ticks roughly twice every second, and there's also an ability to add in a kill switch in order to turn the redstone clock on and off. So in order to set that up, place down a block in the bottom right corner, set up redstone going around and back into the block like so, put down a redstone repeater and set that to two ticks, and then put down a redstone torch here and it will automatically start the circuit. Now in order to take advantage of being able to turn the circuit on and off, you can also apply a lever to this particular clock, and when you activate the lever, it will turn off the redstone clock. However, if you turn the lever back off, it will reactivate the clock. The final redstone clock is the fastest. In order to set it up, you need to put down a single block in the middle, place a redstone torch on all four sides of this block, and then put a block on top of the middle block with one block over each one of the redstone torches. Once that's set up, you can then break the block in the middle, place down a single redstone dust, and it will automatically start the redstone clock. Despite the speed of this particular clock, it does have one drawback, which is the fact that it will cause several of the redstone torches to burn out because it goes so quickly. Although there's enough redstone torches to constantly be able to pick up the slack whenever a redstone torch goes out, it still creates a rather irritating sound that can be annoying for some people, and if it's close enough to where the player is, they'll be able to hear it. If they move back approximately 16 blocks away from the closest redstone torch, the sound is not audible. However, that can sometimes be a disadvantage when trying to set up an adventure map because you may need to place the clock several units away from where the player may be. Now the way that you hook up a redstone clock to a command block is by simply taking a piece of redstone dust and drawing it out of any part of the redstone clock and you can hook that up to a command block. In order to get a command block you need to give it to yourself through a command by typing in slash give your name 137. 137 is the code, is the item code for the command block. Then you can place down your command block and you can put in whatever command you need and for this example I'll be doing slash test4 and again that's test4 at player which will detect the nearest player x151, y64, z614 and a radius of 2 which in particular detects this location here and in order to draw the redstone signal out of the command block what you need to use is a redstone comparator so all you need to do is hook that up coming out of the command block and in that way when you are in this position it will output a redstone signal. This redstone signal however is very weak. It will only put out a redstone signal to a single redstone dust coming out of the comparator. So you can choose to either have that hooked up to a redstone repeater in order to create a stronger signal or you can hook that up however you need to in order for it to work. So those are some of the ways that you can activate a redstone circuit in an adventure map in Minecraft. However, that's only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to creating fully fleshed out adventure maps in Minecraft. For even more, check out some of the class offerings at www.digitalmediaacademy.org and keep an eye out for the Adventures in Minecraft course.